Well, hello there, whiskey folk. Uh, welcome back to the Whiskey Friend with me, Alan. Um, on my last video, I put out a little challenge in the comments. If which single malt you wanted to see me review next, uh, the choices were between the two Campbelltown distilleries, the the Glengale and Kilkerran Cast Strength Eight, and the Glen Scotia Fifteen. Um, so without any further ado, it was it was close, guys. So I had to make a decision, uh, and the one that I've chosen, let me share with you now. Glen Scotia fifteen, uh, fantastic drabness. I have some experience with it, as I say, I've drunk a couple of bottles of it over the years, um, so I know a little bit. Uh, Glen Scotia, fantastic little distillery. Um, it's bottled this at forty six percent ABV. States on the bottle, uh, non chill filtered, which is fantastic. It also states that it's rich and smooth. Um, I think I would much rather have seen uh, no colour added rather than rich and smooth. So I don't know if it is rich and smooth, but we'll come back to that and I'll tell you in a minute. Uh, so without any further ado, uh, I'll just crack on with this Glen Scotia 15. Let's nose it. A lovely gold colour guys um, if there is colour added to this there's not much um, I'm not seeing much around in it and I can't get no taste of colour added um, but it's back to the nose lovely it's crisp, clean, get some citrus, if it's orange, maybe tangerine. orange that ginger spice little hint of, hint of um, herbal notes this is interesting nose for me guys because when I've as I say I've drunk a couple of bottles of this but I've watched a lot of reviews on YouTube on this Glen Scotia 15 and you see, I get a tropical note, um, some mangoes, pineapples, some melon. No one seems to get that when they've been reviewing this, but I definitely get it. So I'm just wondering whether there's some batch variation in this. You see, the bottles I've had, I always get the tropical note. Very nice. It's an engaging nose. Let's taste it. Slant. It's quite assertive on the arrival. It's a big arrival, spirit driven. You've got that ginger up front. That's hot ginger. The citrus is there, fresh fruits there. You've got some toffee, vanilla, a touch of salt.
very well balanced this guys it's got a lovely um lovely mouth feel texture's nice it coats the whole palette coats your teeth very very nice i've got some some dry fruits coming in now sultana touch of peach smoke there now little bit not much Very interesting. It's lovely, lovely dram, this, guys. You see, I, I bought this for £55. Uh, I've bought a couple of bottles of it. And over the years, I see, I've, I've never had an issue with it. It's been a very, very steady dram. Um, it's made by the Glen Scotia Distillery, uh, which is owned by the Loch Lomond Group. Um... Anybody who's watched my first few videos, I have a little bit of a uh, liking for Loch Lomond. Loch Lomond 12 in particular. Uh, that featured in my top five go-to whiskies, um, which is fantastic. So let's taste a bit more. On the, on the arrival, I say it's spice driven, but as it develops, the wood kind of takes over. There's a bit of it's wood driven then. It's coming from um, American oak barrels. I'd probably say bourbon. It's got a bourbon kind of taste in there. Very, very nice. So let's um, let's do the finish. See that mouth coating is lovely. It's dry. Dried fruits are are strong there now. If there's one downside to this bottle, for me it's probably the finish. It's quite a short finish. Doesn't hang around. It's not a bad thing, it just means that it it just sets me up ready just to sip some more. Um, but all in all, it's a fantastic dram. I say if you can pick this up around about that £55. I, I think it's money well spent. But anyway, the reason I chose um, Campbelltown uh, distilleries to review is I had a thought recently is that a lot of the bottles that I'm buying seem to be island distilleries. And what I mean by that, when I started um, drinking whiskey, it seemed to be more... Speyside, Sherried, um, your Glen Levitts, your Glen Morangis, your Glen Fiddocks. I was drinking a lot of those at the beginning. But I'm finding now when I look in my cabinet and the ones that I'm buying to drink seem to be islands. Um, and Campbelltown's quite strong on that because I've bought a lot of Kilcarran, uh, a lot of Springbank. Uh, and I see I've bought a few... Glen Scotia's, I've got the Victoriana uh, and the Ruby Port. I've not actually tried the Ruby Port yet. Um, looking forward to that. But, and when I looked around, I've got a lot of Arran, uh, Isle of Arran bottles, and I find them fantastic. And what I find with them really is that it seems to be in the presentation. Um, if you take Campbelltown, for instance, they've got the three distilleries there. So you've got the Springbank Distillery and Glen Gale, which obviously is part of um, Springbank. And then Glen Scotia, and I don't like to say they're the third distillery on um, Campbelltown, but I think they probably are. So they're, they're kind of hiding there in the background, uh, very underrated. I think over the years it's went through some rebranding. 
for the better, I may add. Um, and I think when you've got somebody on your doorstep, like Springbank, then I think you have to put out great whiskey. And I think uh, Glen Scotia is coming into that bracket now. They say they're bottling at the 46. Uh, I say all of my Springbanks and Kilkerrans are all natural presentation. And when you look at, like, say, Isle of Arran's, they're doing that great presentation at 46%, no colour, uh, no chill filtered. Um, so it's fantastic. We've obviously got the Islas. Um, again, they're all producing fantastic whiskies. I just seem, seem to think that the kind of space side uh, for my palate seems to be kind of losing its way and I'm moving more on to the islands. Uh, and then you can come round and you've got the Highland Parks up in Orkney and you've got Old Pulteney's. You've moving on to Talisker's uh, on Sky. So I think the islands are really, really strong. Where, where I found a little bit of disappointment is, is in Jura. Um, I think Jura was always bottled at that 40%. Uh, never really engaged with Jura. I know they're going through a rebranding package at the minute trying to increase the ABVs uh, and I think it's the way to go. I think as whiskey geeks we've been asking for the 46 ABVs and no colours and I think we're getting there somehow. I'm just waiting for uh, Space Side now really just to throw something at us that's really, if anybody's got any great Space Sides that they reckon I should have a look at then please um, pop a comment. When we're talking about comments, guys, uh, I don't know. The little bell down below, if you like, please click it. Go on, just click it. That'd be fantastic. Um, and give me the thumbs up. Don't forget. And again, Aaron. I love Aaron. I've visited Aaron last year. Uh, and I say they're now doing the second distillery on Aaron, um, which is going to be a peated distillery which, again, is fantastic. Uh, so I've got a real tasting for the the islands at the minute. Um, probably in space side is kind of popped down uh, my pecking order at the minute. But please feel free to comment if you agree, disagree. Uh, I always welcome to feedback. And I think I've done enough now today, guys. That's looking like almost 13 minutes, which is a bit of a trek for me. I've done this all in one take, so if it comes across a bit mashy, then great. Uh, I'm not into editing. Uh, I'd rather just do it all kind of natural. Um, but I look forward to your feedbacks. Look forward to your comments. And please click the bell, um, and that'd be wonderful. So until the next time guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. Thank you.